What are the vibes like in the Red Sox clubhouse heading into the season? Is Rafael Devers feeling a little bit better about things after he openly expressed frustration about the front office's handling of this offseason? All these answers and more on today's Locked on Red Sox. You are Locked on Red Sox, your daily Boston Red Sox podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Red Sox, your daily Boston Red Sox podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Gabby Hurlbut, former ESPN social media associate, and also currently the host of the Boston Balling Podcast. And I am here to bring you the latest in all things Boston Red Sox, Monday through Friday, straight to your favorite podcast feed. And the best part of it all, it's free. So if it's free, why not take advantage, right? So head to Lockdown Red Sox, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Friday. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the show today. I am here once again with former Lockdown Red Sox host, Gabrielle Starr, who currently is a Red Sox reporter for the Boston Herald. And we've talked about a lot so far, including Chris Murphy's injury and how that's going to impact the Red Sox pitching depth to start the season, especially with the fact that Kenley Jansen might not be ready for opening day. We talked about Cutter Crawford and the big spring he's having and the impact Andrew Bailey has had so far on this Boston Red Sox roster in this time that he's been here. But the question now becomes things might be starting to come together for some of the younger guys on this Boston Red Sox team, but Are the vibes high? Is the team ready to go for this upcoming season? So on today's show, we're going to be discussing what things look like in the Red Sox locker room. Are they confident in themselves heading into the season? And has Rafael Devers started to feel a little bit better about the whole situation after his comments he made in regards to the front office? Anything else that we should be excited about heading into 2024? I know Tristan Casas is ready for the season, looking pretty good. Um, any standouts or things that we should be hopeful for as you observed when you were down there? Sorry, I muted myself because the washing machine beeps when it's done. And if you don't turn it off, it just keeps beeping for like an hour. Um <laughs> Obviously, Rafaela has just had a standout spring. Um, you know, you never want to put too much stock into spring, especially for a rookie. But I mean, it is it is worth noting that for a guy who basically the only thing that's been holding him back the last year or so is plate discipline. He's seeing the ball so much better. He's so much more patient at the plate. He's hitting for power. I know that the spring breakout game doesn't count towards the stats, but he's homered four times this spring. Um, he's drawing walks. The defense is obviously never in question with him. I mean, I I was told like a year and a half ago, they were like, we already consider him a big league caliber outfielder. Um, it really like the fact that he wasn't promoted to start last season to AAA um, was literally a plate discipline thing about, you know, we want him to have, be able to work on this without also having to adjust to triple a. Um, so he's so much fun to watch. Also just like a, a nice guy who just loves baseball. Like he talks about baseball. It's like a kid in a candy store. He it's like, he can't believe it's so nice. Um, you know, you're kind of like, I hope, that like the world doesn't like kind of drain that from you basically. Cause he, he talks like he can't believe he gets to do this. And I mean, that's how I feel um, about my job. So I hope that that doesn't change for him because it's, it's really nice to see kind of, especially considering how rough the last few seasons have been for the Red Sox. You know, you need that like youthful ex- enthusiasm of like, you know, it's just nice. Um, the energy with these young players, they're so motivated. They're so excited. They're so, you know, um, this kind of happy. It's, it's very nice to see because it kind of, I feel is emblematic of the change that's happening with this club where 
you have a homegrown core now and you have a young core of talent that maybe last year's record wasn't so great, but there's so many talented guys on this team. And I think it's, I think it's really unfortunate that the front office stuff, the ownership stuff is overshadowing that because that should never be the case. Cause these guys don't have any control over that stuff. Um, and they'll tell you that themselves. Right. But then somehow, you know, they're going to, you know, people aren't going to give them a chance. It's like, well, they're not the ones deciding if they spend money or not. They're not the ones deciding who's on the roster or not, you know, technically, um, you know, they might play themselves onto the roster or off of the roster, but it's not up to them. None of this is up to them. It's up to their bosses. And so to my way of thinking, there are so many young, talented guys on this team that you should want to watch. Um, I understand people don't want to give the team money when they don't spend money, all of that. I get it. I do. Um, when I was growing up here and the team was bad, I also didn't want to give them my money. Um, but I will say, I think people should keep an open mind because you have, first of all, you have Devers and he's in the first year of his contract. Um, he's looked so ready the last couple of weeks. Trevor's story, the defense is such a game is a literal game changer. I mean, you think about how many games last year were won or lost based on infield defense, middle infield defense, and what a game changer he can be there. Um, and then, you know, he's looked so much more ready at the plate than we've seen him in like a year and a half, like two years, basically, basically since his first season here, which wasn't even a full season and he wasn't fully healthy. Um, you know, Casas really talented, just also, has become a really interesting leader for younger players and top prospects. Um, and I think the way that he's so unapologetically himself is a really important way to be, to show young players that you can be yourself and be successful in this industry because, you know, he had, there were people who gave him a hard time. There were veterans who gave him a hard time for doing things that he liked to do, you know, the sunbathing and the, the napping and the, you know, whatever. And because it's like, oh, that's not the way the game is played. There are plenty of ways that the game used to be played that it's not played anymore. Um, and young guys now can look to him and be like, I can be myself. I can have routines that are unorthodox. I can be unique. I can not try to conform. And that's a really powerful thing to see because think about how many guys felt like they couldn't be themselves when they came up and the pressure of trying to be somebody else on top of going from the minors to the majors, it's, you know, that's, that's going to wear on you. Um, so, I mean, there are a ton of reasons to watch this team. Connor Wong is having a really good spring at the plate. Um, I mean, he's had some clutch hits in the past, but he's hitting really well. Um, Jaron Duran is healthy and he's, you know, blowing up the bases again, as usual, stretching singles into doubles, all of that. Um, Yoshida, it'll be really interesting to see now that he's had one year in the majors, how he kind of handles his second year and, and being more of a DH. Um, but I mean, they have, they have a lot of guys that like are talented. And we talked about this before we started recording that a lot of times, you know, it's hard to balance looking at the individual versus the total product, like the sum and the parts. And, you know, forgetting how many bad teams have had amazing players and how many amazing and how many amazing teams have bad players, right? It's very rare that you have a murderer's row or you have a 2018 Red Sox or you have, you know, a lineup of like nine Ted Williams. That that kind of stuff doesn't really happen, right? So why, but why would you cost yourself the opportunity to enjoy something just because the end result might not be the great that great, but the journey might have some really fun things. You know, last year, the end result was not ideal, but you got to see Casas go from having a really slow spring to being one of the best hitters in baseball last year, drawing like 70 walks. You know, he had a Dustin Pedroia-esque rookie of the year campaign and um to you that was Cora's words not even mine um and he would know because as he likes to say Pedroia stole his job um you know Devers wasn't happy with his year last year and he was a silver slugger so you know 
I think that if you want to look, I think that there are good things about this team and reasons to watch this team and players to watch. If you want to be the kind of person who looks for them, if you want to be the kind of person who's like, you know, screw the Red Sox, everything's terrible, then that's fine. But you're going to miss out on all, all the good things too. Um, and, and I just, I don't know why you'd want to do that, right? If you love baseball, if you love the Red Sox, you know, maybe give them like one regular season game before you write them off completely. Or I don't know, a reasonable amount of games, like more than one. Why not at least hope for the best, you know, and, and you can, you, you want to be proven wrong, that's fine. But like, I'd rather be proven right if it means being optimistic. Um, but at least I was optimistic, right? Yeah, exactly. Lots of young players and talent to be excited about with this 2024 Boston Red Sox team heading into the season. But what are the vibes like in the clubhouse? We're going to be touching on that a little bit next. The new year for many people means resolutions to save money. So stop shopping without getting anything in return. Start getting cash back on every purchase you make with Ibotta. After the holidays, we could all use a little extra cash in our pockets, especially after all of the gift giving. We still need to buy the everyday things we need. Make sure you're getting cash back on all of your everyday purchases with Ibotta. Ibotta is a free app that gives you the most cash back every time you shop on hundreds of items from groceries to beauty supplies to toys. So you can make sure you're beating inflation no matter what you're purchasing. The average Ibotta user earns $145 per year. That could cover the cost of an entire shopping trip, buy that flight you've been eyeing, that game you're dying to go to, or the fancy dinner you've been craving. Right now, Ibotta is offering our listeners $5 just for trying it by using the code LOCKEDONMLB when you register. Just go to the App Store or Google Play Store and download the free Ibotta app to start earning cash back and use code LOCKEDONMLB. That's I-B-O-T-T-A in the Google Play or App Store and use code LOCKEDONMLB. I'm telling you, if I could save money on groceries, I absolutely would and you should too. And what you should also do is head to FanDuel if you want to earn lots of money from sports betting. Say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tourney. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. Just visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn and bet on college hoops until they cut down the net. I'm telling you, my fiance can speak from firsthand experience. He's won a ton of money on FanDuel, so that could also be you. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Make the switch to Lockdown Sports today. A free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked on Sports Today it brings you can't miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I feel like, you know, too, um, just the overall vibes of the team could be a huge thing going into this season. And you've kind of indicated how you feel like those clubhouse vibes are really good between these guys right now. Yeah, I mean, for starters, we've seen that the Red Sox teams that have done amazing things over the last two decades are the teams where the vibes are, as the kids say, immaculate. I feel so old saying all of that. Um, but like the energy, like think about the energy of the 04 team. They called themselves the idiots. They didn't take themselves too seriously. Manny used to disappear into the green monster like during games. Johnny Damon had like Jesus haircut. Um, David Ortiz was big poppy because he never remembered anyone's names. So he just called everyone poppy. Like you, I, every year I rewatch the 04 world series movie, like the one that MLB does not four days in October, et cetera. And all of these guys are talking about like, we just didn't take ourselves too seriously. We genuinely liked hanging out, you know, all this stuff. 
and look at the end result. And in 2013, you know, the expectations were low. They were god awful the year before and they were so unlikable and no one went to Johnny Pesky's funeral and I'm never going to not be mad about that. But then 2013, it's like all these guys, including guys that were like, quote unquote, random free agent signings or like veterans from like previous World Series teams like Shane Victorino. It's like those guys recognize like, all right, we put on this uniform and it means something. And then you kick that up about a million notches after the marathon bombing. And these guys are like, we've been here for two months and we are living for you. And it's like, that was what everyone needed. So, you know, you don't have to be the best team, but if you don't have good chemistry, you're definitely not going to be the best team. And this team has good chemistry. These guys like hanging out with each other. These guys are fun. I didn't even touch on the fact that Tanner Houck and Garrett Whitlock are like the most fun pair of best friends. You just see them hanging out together and they are just a hoot. They are like the odd couple, um, you know, that not the TV show, the old movie with uh, I think it's Jack Lemon. And oh, yeah, yeah. wow, I, I really sound old now. Am I 80? Um, <laughs> like I, I did this thing. I went around the clubhouse. I asked a bunch of players in one day. I asked a bunch of players. I was like, what if you felt like if you if there was an animal that like you felt like you related to um, if you could describe yourself as like an animal, you know, et cetera, what animal would you be? And I went over to Tanner and he and Garrett have lockers next to each other. And it, it's like Giolito, Chris Martin, and then Whitlock and Hauk. And Whitlock wasn't there when I started, but Martin and Giolito I'd already asked. And Giolito said wolf. And then he's like golden retriever, but wolf because golden retriever is not cool enough. And I was like, okay. And then Martin said giraffe which I thought was amazing. So I asked Hauk and he says, well, can it be a cartoon? Because I think I'm Tigger. I was like, Aww. I mean, yeah, it can be a cartoon. He's like, cause I feel like Tiger's not accurate, but Tigger is accurate for me. That's cause so I'm kind cool. of like bouncing off the walls. You know, he told me like, he's like, I have ADHD. I'm kind of all over the place, very energetic, you know, all this kind of stuff. And I said, okay, well, so at this point in the season and the spring, he and Whitlock had already described themselves jokingly as Tweedledee and Tweedledum to me at one point. Um, and so I said, okay, well, if you're Tigger, who does that make Whitlock? And he goes, Eeyore. And at this moment, oh. Whitlock walks over and he's like, well, I heard my name. And, and Hauk's like, yeah, I'm just telling her how you're Eeyore. And Whitlock's like, what? Like, what are you talking about? And I was like, I'm asking all these guys, like, if you were an animal, like, what animal would you be? And, and he said, Tigger, and that you're Eeyore. And Whitlock was, like, half outraged. She's like, I'm a depressed freaking donkey. You think I'm a depressed freaking donkey? That was a direct quote, depressed freaking donkey. And I'm standing there. I'm trying not to, like, cry laughing. I'm like, I need to be professional. But this is, like, a two-person little, like, Abbott and Costello who's on first situation here. And Hauk's like trying to explain to him. He's like, well, yeah, because you're not a morning person. And when you haven't had your coffee yet at like 7 a.m., you're you're Eeyore. And <laughs> Whitlock was like so outraged. And he looks at me. He goes, no, I'm a bird of prey. And I was like, OK, because you're like, m like devouring batters. And he's like, that's really intense. And, was, and Hauk goes, but that's what you said. You're a bird of prey. And that's what they do. He's just like trolling him endlessly. Whitlock's like, no, I'm a red-tailed hawk because they're kind of loners, but they mate for life and they're really loyal and, and all this stuff. And Hawk's like, wow, you took this to like a whole nother level. And he's like, I took it to the level she was asking for, not a depressed donkey. And, and, and meanwhile, Chris Martin walks back over and he goes, you are Eeyore. I said I was a giraffe. Like, they're all just talking about this. The next day, Whitlock comes by on his bicycle at the, you know, at the facility. And he goes, so we talked about it more last night. And Tanner is dug from up. Like, the dog. Are you serious? What? <laughs> and I was like, I was like, how long did you guys talk about this? He's like, I don't know, like an hour or so. It's just the like the energy that a lot of these players have with each that. other the friendships that they have with each other is really fun 
and it's different and it's it's not too serious you know i had these two guys who are like just going back and forth about whether or not he's eeyore or a bird of prey and then oh and then after that whitlock goes i think tanner's a bear but not like a scary bear um and i was like so like winnie the pooh he's like no more like yogi bear and then he did a perfect yogi bear like Hey there, boo boo. Like, I think I see a picnic. Like, and I'm just like, who are you people? They're fun. They're fun. And if you like give them a chance to be fun, you'll see it. But I think, you know, I'm not putting it on the fans, but I think if you give the players a chance to show you who they are, you might be surprised. Like, I was definitely surprised when I went around asking all these guys, like, what their animal would be. And, you know, some of them I expected. I expected a couple lions, got a couple lions. Trevor Story said lion. Kenley Jansen wouldn't tell me. He pulled up a picture on his phone of a lion and it said, I'm coming for all the things that they said I couldn't have. I was like, damn, Kenley, that is so like, what a, what a mic drop moment. Like, of course, the closer just like drops the mic, gets out of there. Um, yeah, but, right. You know, a lot of times I feel like, especially in a city like Boston, where you're under this microscope and the expectations are low, et cetera. These guys aren't necessarily going to want to show you who they are. But I think with the expectations being so low, why not have fun? Right. I remember saying, I remember saying this in, he was 2019, maybe 2020. I don't know. It was one of Brock Holtz. It was like Brock Holtz last season or something. I was like, okay, the team is terrible. So he wants to pitch. Just let him pitch. It doesn't matter. You're getting blown out either way. So why don't you just let him pitch? Cause he wants to, it'll be fun. You know, I'm not saying that that's exactly the, the appropriate vibe here. I'm just saying, you know, if you, if you give these guys a chance, you might be surprised in more ways than one. And it, it might be a pleasant surprise, not, you know, another kind of last place finish downer. And even if it is, you might enjoy it more along the way instead of just everyone being like miserable the whole time. Yeah. I feel like if you actively go into it and say, I'm excited to see the development of some of these younger guys, like I'm excited to see this, or I'm excited to see that. And you're identifying those things that could be good about this team. Then you're going to enjoy the season more. Whereas if you go into it saying um, this team is going to be so bad, like they didn't spend any money. They're, just, you know, nothing went right for them this off season, then you're not going to enjoy it. Like you have to actually go in knowing you're going to appreciate some of these things that could be a huge part of the Red Sox future, because that's exciting too, is the future of this team. The face of the Red Sox franchise and Raphael Devers expressed some frustration about the front office and how they've been handling this offseason. So coming up, we're going to be talking about that and how's he really feeling going into this upcoming year? Fire TV is your destination for sports. From live games to highlights to in-depth analysis, Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs, as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels lets you dive into all of the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date on all the latest in the world of sports. March Madness, NBA, MLB, and lots more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, travel, and even cooking videos. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit www.amazon.com slash LockedOnFireTV. It really gives you the option to watch so many different things, so you should definitely check it out today. 
Also check out Locked On Sports today as we have launched the first ever National Sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube and now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. I know Raphael Devers had expressed some verbal frustration about how the offseason was going um, at one point. So how do you think he's feeling going into this season? You know, that was a really surprising day. That was his first media availability. Um, yeah. I think that was. He gets came right out and said it. I think that was the Sunday, like the day before full squad workout. Um, and we all kind of were just looking at each other when it was over. Like, did that really just happen? Because one of my favorite things that David Ortiz has said about Devers, he said it, I think, last year was like, he was like, man, he's shy. He's not going to be like me, just like out here yelling at everyone. But, you know, I, I think I think that speaks to Devers taking these huge steps forward in terms of feeling comfortable as a leader and a more veteran guy. Because even though he is still a younger guy, you know, the contrast between the Devers that spoke to us at Winter Weekend last year when, you know, he had just signed the contract the month before and – or earlier that month, actually, sorry. Um, that was right after the New Year's that the contra- contract happened. Um, you know, so it's like two weeks later, three weeks later, and he's talking to us and he's like, I I know that it's my sixth or seventh season, whatever. Um, but he's like, I still feel really young, you know, to be called a leader and, and all this kind of stuff. And is first year without Bogarts and all these things. And also the contract technically didn't start until this year. But in the last year, he's gotten more vocal. He's gotten more comfortable kind of talking about how he feels, um, more kind of just leading not just by example, which is what he used to say he wanted to do, but leading, you know, kind of with his words to, I think it's really important. He's the last player from the last championship team. That's something that Pedro and Poppy have talked a lot about over the last two, three years, you know, with regards to Devers and Bogarts and extensions and all these kinds of things of there was always a link between the championship teams, right? There was always at least one player who played on those teams. And if you don't have that, if you don't know what it's like to win here, you don't have someone who tells you what it's like here, then you are going to like, it's going to be difficult. And so to have Devers take those steps forward to the point where he's diplomatically, but (laughs) calling out a lot of things, um, you know, that is very powerful, but it, but the way that he did it also shows you how much he's kind of matured and come into his own as a leader that he was able to do so in the way that he did. He was able to say, Everyone knows what we need. You know what we need. We know what we need. Everybody who knows baseball knows what we need, et cetera. Um, paraphrasing almost exactly since I've now yeah, seen yeah. Read, now I've, now what he said. transcribed those quotes and had to you know use them several times. For a guy like Devers, who in previous years was much more quiet about these things, much more kind of, I just want to be a good teammate. I want to play and I want to win. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, For him to kind of be able to maneuver that situation the way that he did was really impressive and unexpected, even as we've seen him kind of come into this role. But I don't think any of us expected it, like, and not in a bad way. I just don't think anyone expected it to materialize so profoundly or prominently, you know, the way that it did in that conversation compared to just kind of seeing those changes. You know, it's like when you see a picture of your parents from 20 years ago, you see your parents all the time usually. So you don't really see them getting older. But then you look back and you're like, oh my God, my mom looks older, right? No, it's so true. Kind of like how it is with Devers where he's been this, you know, like he's been the young guy on the team and this like, you know, young, happy, you know, kind of shy 
guy on the team for a really long time and he wasn't the leader and he was happy not to be the leader because he looked up to the leaders and he was def deferential in the way that baseball tradition dictates that you be deferential. Um, saw that with Bayo yesterday when he's like, I thought Pavetta was going to get the opening day start. You know, it's a big thing in clubhouses to kind of defer to veteran players and longer tenured players. And now he's the longest tenured, but he's also the highest paid in franchise history. And he told us last year, he's like, I don't want money to change. You know, money's not going to change me. That's true. Cora jokes about how Devers is like very cheap, um, all these kinds of things. But, you know, I think it's really encouraging to see a guy not be changed in those ways, but take such meaningful steps forward in, in stepping into a leadership role, stepping out of your comfort zone, but also simultaneously getting more comfortable being in this role. I think it's really important. Um, and, you know, I, I hope that people allow him to kind of take that role the way that's best for him, because he is so important to this team and will be for such a long time. And he's the biggest investment they've ever made in terms of years and money um, where you, you know, that there are people who are going to be like, well, you're paying, you're getting 300 plus million dollars. So you have to be this. Would you rather force him to be someone he's not, and then have him struggle through this investment? Or would you say, okay, let's find a way for you to do this the best way for you and us? And I think that he's finding out that he can do that where he doesn't have to be the loudest voice in the clubhouse all the time, but he can have his voice and say what needs to be said. Um, and it's like, even now I'm like, am I, I, I just remember standing there being like, am, am I, he, is he, I, I mean, my Spanish is, is okay. Um, and then one of the socks, translators was obviously translating for a lot of it because Devers usually will not, he'll answer some questions in, in English, um, but not, not when it's like a longer one where he wants to make sure everything kind of comes out the way that he wants it to, which again, a, a sign of kind of like maturity and, and leadership that he's really focused on making sure he represents himself and the team the right way. Um, and just standing there being like, did he just, did he just, okay, that's, yeah. you know, not what we thought we were going to talk about today, but, uh, or not, you know, not that he was going to answer like this, where um, the translator, he would translate, you know, and then Devers would just go right back into talking. It was like, there was a point where Devers said this whole long answer, Carlos Benitez translated. And then Devers just kept going. He translated again. Devers went back. And we were all just like, he has a lot to say. Um, you know, and, and yeah, even, it was, it was even that, even Devers having a lot to say, it, it's not usually um not always the case. Um, so it was, it was, it was very impressive just seeing how he kind of handled that situation. Um and I think I think a lot of the players have done a good job of, of kind of navigating that where, you know, you can express some frustrations, but also not, you know, make your team teammates feel bad, you know, of saying, like, basically, I don't think we're good enough. I don't think you're good enough. That's not going to be productive. And I think that also speaks to the team chemistry is all of these guys are they know they know what people think of them. They know where they're at. They know how they feel about each other and what they all want. And um, they know what they need, but they're not they're not kind of airing each other out or or trying to make anyone feel bad in that because like I said earlier, it's not up to them, right? It's it's up to uh, the people in charge of them. So I think I think it's a really promising group. Um, I think it's a talented group. Um, I think it's a group that deserves a chance. I mean, every team deserves a chance, right? Yeah. Start of the season. You have no idea who's going to be good, who's going to be bad. Um, but, it, you know, allow yourself the possibility that you will be pleasantly surprised and enjoy things. Um, if you're open to that, 
with the socks, with your life. It's just a better way to be, right? Because why would you want to go into something expecting the worst? Yeah, no, that's not fun. You know, and I, I don't think they're going to be the worst. I mean, I they might not be the best, but there have been plenty of times that <laughs> we've seen them go from worst to first and from first to worst. And, you know, I mean, I asked somebody this last year because the Yankees were at risk of ending their winning season streak. And somebody was like, this would be appalling. I was like, first of all, if George Steinbrenner saw that the only thing the Yankees still had going for them was that they had a over 500 regular season record every year, he would have a massive, massive tantrum and fire everybody. Oh, yeah. But also, would you rather ride the Red Sox roller coaster where, yeah, there have been several lose. There's been, what, four last place finishes or five last place finishes in the last decade. There's also been four championships in this century, more than any other team. And you've got teams that have never won one. You've got teams that haven't won since 1948, like Cleveland. You know, you've got teams. You know, the Yankees have won one World Series since the year 2000. Yeah. They haven't even won the pennant since 2009, which is when they won their last World Series. I'm like, I personally would rather be a fan of a team cover a team, follow a team, whatever you want to, whatever kind of baseball life you have. I would rather that and ride the roller coaster in Boston than be like, all right, yeah, so they're going to win. Uh, they're going to have a winning record every year, but then they're going to choke in the postseason again because they have like the curse of the big poppy or whatever, you know? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's what you do when the lights shine the brightest and when the Red Sox have gotten to that point, they've stepped up in ways that no other team, literally no other team has in this, in this millennium. Um, and you know, that to me, not to be super cheesy, but like the good times seem better contrasted with the bad times. Right. You know, because otherwise it's like, all right, it's all the same. When you can appreciate 2012 leading into 2013, when you can appreciate the contrast of this season was so awful in so many ways. And I was, you know, so sick of this team and they were so unlikable. And then you go into 2013 where this team, a lot of guys you didn't even know beforehand or barely thought of, maybe never really saw play against you because they're, you know, from another from the National League and they were never really here. And they basically write this season long love letter to a city that they're brand new to for you to make your life better after a dark time. If they were just winning the World Series every year, that still would have been a special year, but it wouldn't have been the same as what it was. Yeah. And so, you know, maybe they're going to be bad this year. Maybe they're not. But a lot of times they're not what anyone expects in a really good way. And Knowing that about them, as we all do, or as we all should know, if you are listening to this podcast and therefore likely care somewhat about the Red Sox, give them a chance. I don't know how many more, more times I can say it. And, and you, know, you and I both know someone's going to be like, oh, well, she's talking like a fan. No, I'm talking like somebody who sees a group of guys who want to win. And... 99.999% of the time, guys just want to win. They're not going out there to, to be bad on purpose. That's absurd. No. It's their job. Yeah. It's also their lifelong goal to be doing what they're doing. And if they get there, they have to want to stay there, right? And so it's it's like like people people act like they don't want to be good. It's like if you if you if you want to be mad at ownership and say they don't want to field a good team you are well within your right to say that. And there are arguments to be made that by not spending, that is somewhat the case. But you cannot go out there and say, these players don't want to win. Because, I mean, you can, but it's not true. Um, and they're not going out there trying to lose games. And if you if you shift your perspectives on those kinds of things, you open yourself up to 
potentially not being miserable about the Red Sox, which I would totally recommend. I do not recommend being miserable about the Red Sox. I have done that before in my life. It is a lot more fun to be pleasantly surprised. Um, I remember when I was hosting this show, before the 2021 season, we all did these prediction videos. And mine is still up somewhere on Twitter on like the Locked On MLB page. I think I bookmarked it at some point, but I did my video and it was like each of us had to do a hot take and like kind of a prediction for their team season. And I got raked over the coals because my hot take was that the Red Sox were going to be better than people thought, fun to watch, and sniff a wild card. And guess what? They were fun to watch, better than people thought, and they went to the ALCS. Yep. And I was like, I remember later in the season, like when they clinched the wild card, I think, or maybe like sometime during that postseason run, I remember finding that video and being like, a lot of you, you don't owe me an apology because I don't care, but a lot of you should have given this team a chance. Because why not, right? And that was a really fun year. That was a really fun year. And that was not what anyone expected. And, you know, I, f I feel like my gut is usually not wrong. I was right about 2017 when I made everyone mad by saying that they were a good regular season team that was not a postseason team. Um, I was right in 2018 when I said they were really going to be really good. They were going to be really good. Um, yeah, I've been wrong about stuff too, but my gut is usually right at the start of a season that this team can pleasantly surprise you. Um, so allow yourself to be pleasantly surprised. What's the worst that's going to happen? You're going to go back. You're, it's going to end up like it, like you originally thought it was before you decided to not be negative all the time. I, that's the worst that's going to happen. You're going to watch them anyway. Instead of bitching and moaning, you might as well just like wait a couple weeks to bitch and moan, right? Yeah, right. Well, you heard it here first, everybody. Be positive. Get excited about the season. I mean, that's what we're all here for, right? It's just to watch baseball, and we all love the Red Sox. So just allow yourself to be excited for this upcoming season. We'll see what happens with the team. They may hit expectations. They may far surpass expe expectations. We really don't know right now. It's too soon to tell, but just – Keep that faith going. Just be excited about the Red Sox. And as always, go Red Sox. Gabrielle, thank you so much for joining me. This was an absolute pleasure having you, hearing your opinion, and giving you a little, uh, you know, reunion with Lockdown Red Sox. Oh, my God. Thank you so much for having me. Um, this was a lot of fun. Um, nice to be back. And one week from today or tomorrow technically, but I'll be flying to Seattle one week from today. So we're get we're getting there. If you're if you're somebody who's excited, we are getting close. Um if you're someone who's not, I'm sorry you're it's so unhappy. That, that must suck to be so unhappy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. That's that's on them. Um but yeah. thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Go Red Sox. Just get excited. We're almost here. Baseball's almost here. The Red Sox might do uh, bigger things this year than you might think. So thanks for tuning in as always, and I will catch you next time.